So here I am on the north coast of Northern Ireland, the home of Game of Thrones, the Giant's Causeway and Bushmills Whiskey. And I've been invited up by Tim Delargy from Deera, who manages the salmon centre here. And Tim's invited me up to have a, have a fish for salmon, but also to learn more about the research they do here, which is really, really interesting and, and next level as regards telemetry on fish they release into the wild and stuff like that. And the decline of the Atlantic salmon is a hot topic among fishermen at the moment, everywhere in Ireland and the British Isles. So I've come up just with an open mind to see what Tim has to say and to find out a little bit more about what they do here. I want a bigger population of wild fish in this river, but a combination of ranched or hatched fish to take an easement off if it happens that catch release after three years, if we hit our conservation limit, that's, that anglers may be able to take uh, a hatched fish as opposed to a wild fish. So we're supplementing the wild fish run, we're protecting the wild fish run, but all fine, all dandy, but you need to have the, the river system and it's a good working order as possible. So with um, habitat restoration, removing of weeds and, and spawn gravel, all helps essentially to survival of any, any salmon. Good, healthy river ecosystems are essential, and looking after this great, famous river is only a small part of the work the centre does. As a part of ensuring the future of this great migratory fish, the centre strips eggs and sperm from the adults and breeds their own young salmon called smolts. This process can often bring its own challenges. With increasing temperatures in the water, we're finding a bit more disease coming into the farm, so we have to be sort of on our toes just if there's an out outbreak automatically uh, feeding them with correct antibiotics. Um, this year not too bad because we've had a sort of low-lying uh, freezing temperatures um, where the hot summer did increase slightly but compared to other river systems were quite sort of not too bad normal on stage. But at the minute what we'll do is we'll just keep checking for gill disease, um, any signs of any disease at all. What we're finding is our smokes are leaving uh, all of them basically by the end of April, where historically they would have left towards the middle of May, end of May. And that's down to uh, temperatures of the water. So um, we have a few papers have been written through the research we've done on the salmon station. Um, it has a sort of a, a dual effect where uh, what we try to do is we try to release our smolts at the same time as, as the wild smolts. And that will help the run towards the sea. We've only about two and a half, three miles towards the sea mouth. Um, with predation, heavy predation through cormorants, otters and herons, um, our, our hatched fish will kind of take that easement off the wild fish, so if we do happen to lose a few more foreign fish or hatched fish through predation, it takes uh, maybe three and one towards the wild fish, so it's expected. It seems like they have to run the gauntlet out to the open sea, but how do you keep track of the numbers that go missing or hopefully return? A small microtag with a binary code. We insert it into the nose of, of a smolt, or our hatch smolt. Um, if the NASCO vessels are out, or any of the, the research vessels, if they happen to pick up one of the bush, bush fish, we can track where our fish are actually going. That's pretty next level. That's next level. Yeah. That's something, um, especially with telemetry work, um, with all modern technology now, it's something that we're availing of, it has to be used. One of the biggest shock factors was we radio tracked um, 25 smolts in the smolt trap. Um, we had a PhD student come in, so we inserted a radio tracker into these smolts. Um, we released them from the smolt trap and we put up a, a substation halfway down the river to track the, the movement of the fish. In the evening time, morning time, when, when uh, smolts tend to move, we uh, went down with an antennae. So we lost about 40% of our, of our smolts from the smolt trap to the sea in a three mile radius. And that's just predation? Predation, yeah. Wow. Um, we have population of otters work in the river. We have obviously the cormorants and herons. Uh, I was down one evening uh, and one of the river banks, uh, I counted 17 herons. It isn't a local problem either. The, the river in Scotland always historically were known as big heavy fish, fish rivers and from reading articles and stuff you can see that their, their catches are, are down as are everybody's, you know, it's not just ourselves and other rivers. Um, hence why we introduced um, catch release and it is essential, it is essential. Every fish counts, um, from spawning to, to, to uh, bringing uh, money into the economy. 
the good work that is going on all over the world from Scotland, Iceland and all the way around the Atlantic and back to this great river is all ensuring that the future of these great wild visitors keep returning. But while I'm here, I thought I would practice some casting skills. No salmon needs to worry about being caught by me today though. I think I will go and visit the whiskey shop over the road instead. Yeah.